Welcome back to Brom's League Heroes number 200. 199 matches behind us. And who knows how many ahead. But I want to thank you all. Before we get started on this particular journey for sticking with me through the ups and the many downs going sideways and looking over and not liking what you saw but still continuing to watch anyways surviving through the Terran versus Terran and everything else but mostly Terran versus Terran and with that I ask again like subscribe and have you heard the news? Paper Man in the top right! The red SCVs. Yes, he's back. And the plucky Protoss of old has been replaced by the tenacious Terran. I want to tell you right now the, the, a bit of the history of this match. I, I'm going to spoil it a little. Now, I don't know what happens, and I don't know how it ends, but neither of the matches we've seen with Newspaper Man have been sent in by Newspaper Man, and I think that is already an indicator of beautiful things happening as he builds three refineries to start the match. Yes, Newspaper Man is back playing Terran with his own beautiful strategies, but before... We break down the builds. Let's introduce your blue team challenger. It is Ralph W. And the W stands for winning. An engineering bay completed at two minutes. Uh, a refinery of newspaper man in his base, adding on a second barracks of factory. Meanwhile, newspaper man with a scan as he, as he builds a factory in his opponent's main. You can never be too careful. He's got the orbital. All right. Averaging an action every couple of seconds. I don't know what he's doing with all that extra uh, speed there. But right now, keeping tabs on his opponent. Despite the fact he does indeed have a refinery in his base. The proxy factory. He even stole a gas canister here with which to fuel things. The Hellion, though, I mean, there's the SCV couldn't have gotten out, so this is one of the more obvious. Oh, the Hellion got a little distracted. I, um, the SCV successfully hides behind the factory. The factory itself, building a Widow Mine. Did I, I forget if I mentioned this, but this match was played on Christmas Day. Yes, a Christmas Day showdown. I noticed that on the replay file. These two players decided to queue up for the ladder, and indeed the ladder, and play this out. Um, because getting those ladder points is the most important thing for a Bronze League hero. And that is the commitment that I personally love and want to bring to you. Yes, yes. Uh, the the storyline. I I know this isn't uh, Bronze League's Got Talent because otherwise it wouldn't be Bronze League. But between Newspaper Man with multiple games against him sent in, as well as a match a Terran versus Terran on Christmas Day, on top of multiple proxy buildings, we're off to a great start. The factory escapes. Barely intact before it begins burning. Back at home, Stim, nearly complete. All six Terran Republic commandos will be ready to hit the needles and the track, sprinting forward probably closer to their death. Meanwhile, Ralph W. has a command center on the low ground. I don't know if he built it there. There's been so much action I haven't been able to keep up. The Marines didn't quite see the factory. Attack. It was slightly off to the left. 
or it has built another widow mine. Meanwhile, another bunker outpost for newspaper man. That, 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 wait. Um. Yes, that was Ralph's Hellion trying to hide under the cliff. The Marines actually didn't notice until it ran out in front of them. And uh, both sides, after the initial aggression, if we can call it that, will contract out the specialized SCVs qualified to make the walls. A newspaper man investing in a tag team duo. Two brothers. Construction. Incorporated. LLC. Esquire. They, they dabble in many fields. Another widow mine. Maybe a little late and a little ambitious on burrowing will be destroyed. As Ralph puts together the makings of an actual build. Now. Yes. He may have been off to an awkward start with his gas stolen, his engineering bay for aesthetic purposes, and uh, a factory in his base. But as things come together, his plus one armor for infantry, one of the top two upgrades to start with, uh, a, a medevac. He I, was he researching STEM and then canceled it? Or, or was that just newspaper? Ma Either way. Ralph with a surprisingly standard-looking tank attack. Now, these Marines do not have stim, nor do they have combat shields. It looks like he is inspired as well by his opponent to build some Whittle Mines. Not that his opponent has had much success with them, but I think it's more like Ralph was reminded that Whittle Mines are a unit that exists. Just skyrocketing past three dozen actions per minute. Both of these players, Newspaper Man with a 3 APM edge. But what will he do with it? A Marine testing out the dropship. Yep, it works. Meanwhile, two brothers. They stand by their work. Probably a bad idea. The tank sieges. The brothers will get healed and somehow survive. Until a scan. But the brothers will watch the bunker and escape back inside, saying that was under warranty. But no 25% restocking fee here. He loses the entire bunker. More scans. Vendaya scan. Counter scan. Marines wander forward, but the combat shield will keep more of them alive. A widow mine moves forward. Ah, it's like poetry. It rhymes. Another mine dies at the natural, but this time, the other natural. But there's another mine. As the Minecraft gaming continues to heat up, the battle will escalate, trying to protect the mine. The tank retargets. Newspaper man stems. He's got combat shield. He's got plus one. Ralph moves in. Runs down the Marines. Ralph on the cusp of breaking the natural, and all he has then... There's a single bunker on the high ground to break through. Newspaper Man has built a reactor factory on the other side. The Widow Mine will burrow and slam into the SCVs. Down goes the orbital. Back to one base is Newspaper Man, who starts his double upgrades upon being reminded he built Engineering Base. But Ralph, in his pragmatic approach, will allow Newspaper Man to continue to build up, and that means the Marines can't just come strolling up the ramp. Ralph gonna transition into the most obvious follow-up, which is uh, Ghost Armory Building Armor Fusion Core Double Armory Starport. Um, A.K.A. everything else, because Marines and tanks have had their day, but now the battlecruisers come out to play. Ralph understands he has map control. He's got 2,600 minerals. Marines are just not that great of a unit. Battle cruisers are way cooler. The engineering bay is taken down. He made the mistake of not getting them at two minutes in his own main. Ralph actually losing many of his Marines to deal with the engineering bays as the tanks will stand off. The oh picks up into the medevac boosts away, but the Viking micro. Oh, oh, 
not quite enough. But the Vikings could land on the tanks. Or he could slowly inch the tanks forward. Oh, perfectly placed. Great. Greatly done here by Newspaper Man. Actually perfect. Uh, the vision blocks here, whether by fate or by planning. Beautiful tank was the, the Widow Mines. Ah, he didn't have an armory, so... Widow Mines also being scattered into the fray. Haphazardly. A Liberator. I think got hit by the mine. As it made its way out, thus revealing it, but two more mines will scamper in. Another command center. The main base is, uh... Fraught with production. <laughs> For both sides. We do have, of course, the Fusion Core! But nothing being built off it yet is Ralph W. Is building Cloak for Ghosts, plus one infantry weapons, and a Cyclone. Which is one of the units that does very much exist. Meanwhile, 1-1 one, one begins again for Newspaper Man. The worker count, 32 to 42. Now, is that really a factor? Um, wait, Newspaper Man has 600 more mineral income because he dropped, like, eight mules. Ralph, though, is preparing not a second, but a third command center, yes. A macro man himself. That's how he got his W. Meanwhile, at the bruised factory, Widow Mines continue to pop out at seemingly random times. Ravens are definitely put. Check that one off your bingo card. Ravens from Ralph. We'll see how that pans out for him. Newspaper man suddenly has quite a tank line at his natural, <laughs> and a nuclear missile. There are no ghosts. A nuclear missile, a battle cruiser, a cyclone. It feels like Ralph has decided that it, essentially he's put in he's put in his, his shift, all right? He did his marine tank push. And now it's time for the real strategy game. A nuke, ravens, cyclones, battle cruisers. Meanwhile, newspaper man, another command center at the third. Willing to take the space given to him by Ralph, who now is obviously quite fo- Oh, Ralph, come back! He's consulting the Prima strategy guide. Ah. Yes, as time goes on, the APMs crawl upwards as simply there are more units to build. Oh! Okay. Well. Um. This liberate. Oh, okay. wow, that's. That is one way to counter it. Leaving the reactor behind, but the liberator will chase the factory. As liberators have a tendency to do. And so will everyone else! <laughs> Here comes the neighborhood. Four cyclones, though not locking on. The raven staring it down. The factory will attempt to land, but it's not enough. That factory. The attention of the entire army brought down upon it. And another fusion! Oh, triple army and fusion core! Because ah! all roads lead to battle cruisers. No matter how long and meandering. Meandering. Ah, uh, yes, the laziest of Zerg units, the meandering. Not pictured here because it couldn't be bothered to show up. More command centers as both players explore what it is to play a city builder game. The true purpose of playing Terra. The TPM surprisingly low, the turrets per minute, only a half dozen, though I think once either of them reveals their battlecruiser card, uh, the turrets per minute may raise significantly. A planet, a forward planetary, but building armor is done for Ralph W. Two battle cruisers now being produced. There are just upgrades, uh, a stew of upgrades around. Some zoning planetaries for Newspaper Man. 
Oh yeah, with the Neil Steel armor upgrade, you get the double. This may be surprising. Oh, scans, scans. But will newspaper man let it go unanswered? No, the counter scans and he finds the army. All will be revealed as both players are reminded that scan exists. Now, with that knowledge, what will they do? Ah, yes. A campaign level defense being set up at the forward base for Ralph. Um, at least he won't be supply block. The SCVs get to work. Unfortunately, you can't construct actual sandbags, making this game inferior to Company of Heroes. Meanwhile, three battle cruisers plus three armor as the times of peace continue, but not the times of idleness as both players build up. The next battle will be fought with much greater numbers and much larger violence. Whether that means literally nuclear missiles, fleets of battle cruisers, or maybe it's some random widow mines, it's unclear. But Ralph adding on three ghost academies. He already has a nuke, but he doesn't have ghosts. So that will be interesting. Newspaper man has built up a platoon of Marines. They will, on a, on a re reconnaissance mission, a bold, brave group, though ill-equipped to deal, yep, that's an army, so he sees it. It's four, five, six battle cruisers, but over here there are zero, but the sandbags holding. Oh, he stims. Everyone drawn into the action. Down go the Cyclones. Liberator, Raven 1, Raven 2. But the battle cruisers show up. Essentially, all the extraneous, boring, useless units are gunned down, including the Marines. The battle cruisers just cleaning the uh, wheat from the chaff, if you would. Ralph fortuitously freeing up that supply with which to build more of the battle cruisers. The the perimeter command centers will continue to grow. Ralph's having trouble finding something to it. Ralph, come back. Come back to us, Ralph. Newspaper man well over one action every second. Ralph has been consulting the the strat oh he jumps he jumps what he jumps four cruisers and and then two more cruisers just a staggered formation there's three more cruisers where that came from he's trying to collect himself okay so now he's got I mean he could wait it out Two newspaper ram didn't better. see it he he doesn't know. You can't see where they jump to unless it's in vision. The sandbags have been rebuilt. He could wait out the jump cooldown, which would actually be some surprising foresight. A scan? Who knows where? Uh, is there a counter? Is that another scan? A scan at the natural. No scan at the main. Some Vikings and battle cruisers uh, just hanging out by the starport, loitering. The battle cruisers wait for their moment. Like a particularly large and bathtub shaped tiger. Or cobra. Or bathtub. With lasers. Ready to strike. Yeah, the SCV trapped in a prison of its own design may be the first one to experience and sound the alarm. Another squad of marines on its way out. The the sandbag. More jumps. 
Oh no, those ones are in vision range. He may have jumped too many. Complete. There's only enough space Upgrade on this exact done. plane. Um, newspaper man though, focused on the front. Now, awkwardly for Ralph, the battle cruisers are on the other side of the map, but the sandbags are holding. The Liberators will siege. A planetary is finishing. Oh, wow. Those marines are real stacked up. Oh, the planetary just laying into them. There's no chance. Just tossing the marines away. A handful get drawn in. Newspaper man with these, like, tower defense level waves of marines. Three will survive. That the battle cruisers have joined the fray. They do have Yamato. Here come the Vikings. What are the upgrades? We got... I, uh, well, who knows? Let's find out. He, he just jumps out, but some of the battle cruisers still have jump on cooldown, which seems a little inconsiderate. Wait, did he already use his Yamatos on what? The engineering bay? Oh, no. Yes, plus two. Plus two for newspaper man. Ralph, on the other hand, with plus two ship weapons and plus one armor. He, he must have used all his Yamato cannons on the first engineering bay. He may have just held down the... Oh, my. Oh, we even missed it because... I, I did not expect such a commitment to destroying the valuable engineering bay. They will be rebuilt in the exact same location. Meanwhile, Ralph, adding on a little bit of everything. High sec auto tracking. Yamato inspired out of newspaper man. Reminded it exists. By the nature of those battle cruisers, the TPM begins to raise. The defenses. Just. I. Settle in. The turret count is at 21, bringing us to one turret per minute. Oh, 25 and skyrocketing, which is the entire point of turrets when you think about it. But a scan. He spots it. Those ghosts. There are four nukes. Launch them. He fires off three. The planetary. Oh, no. Oh, this looks like it's going to be a little anticlimactic. The nukes fly off into the sunset. He walked into turret range. An unfortunate conclusion. More scans. More scans. He jumps out of the scans. A blind jump. Only a turret or two. There's nothing else here to defend. He targets the turret. He's definitely microing Yamato Volley onto the orbital. It will go down. The uh, rapid reignition thrusters for the zero metavags in production for newspaper, man. The battle cruisers gonna try to cruise their way out. The Vikings a little off target here. The turrets taking some chunks. Marines will stim, but chasing down battle cruisers is not a super profitable endeavor. Another one taken down. But marines cannot fly, much to their dismay. Another stim. But battle cruisers are not really a premium target for marines. They're doing their best. But it's not going to be good enough. The entire way. Okay, Jimmy. The sensor towers have been created, making sure that nothing shall pass without his knowledge. <laughs> we will see how long the standoff continues. Jimmy! Ah, yes. I'm glad we were able to get the first person view. Um, this is not the back of the StarCraft box. 
this is, and if you've seen Newspaper Man before, he has a particular style. He likes buildings. All right. He likes buildings, and he likes them. And he likes seeing his opponent's buildings as he scans. Ralph has a particular style as well. He's got a more practical-looking style. Um, if he was fighting against zombies. Unfortunately, though, the staggered defenses and scattered turrets and tanks here of Newspaper Man, a little more practical, actually, than depot walls, but practicality is not what it's all about. It's about intimidating your opponent. And it's about freeing up supply by losing all your marines. As we get towards the 25 minute mark with supplies even. Come back! Newspaper man now consulting, searching how to play late game. Like he doesn't already have every si No, new come back! Come back! Newspaper man. Editing his newest article. Why battle cruisers are super OP and should be nerfed. Um, he's, okay. All right, water break. Everyone, quick water break. Always important to stay hydrated during Bronze League Heroes. As, no, okay. Well, it appears we've lost him. Um, Ralph, of course, doesn't know this. In fact, I think Newspaper Man could take a 10-minute break. Um, oh, he's back. He's back. Okay. All right. Now, immediately, 400 APM as he holds down the Marine key. Replacing the brave men he's lost. So far, 132 of them. <laughs> he's only lost 875 gas, which is insane. Considering... Everything that's happened. I guess when you only use marines. Oh, those SCVs. They don't cost gas, though. There are only so many minerals on the map. Maybe maybe his family said, Hey, it's Christmas. Come on down and, and talk with your family. So, he waved down the stairs. He's like, I've got more important things to do with my time. Like, defend this attack. Coming up the ramp, here comes Ralph. With battle cruisers, Vikings on the deck. Vikings in the sky for Newspaper Man. Liberators move to engage. Another Viking fleet. The second squadron called in. Battle cruisers taken down easily. Cyclones on the deck helping out. Vikings raised into the air for Ralph. The battle escalates. Ralph jumps away just in time. A surprising bit of micro, but the, the Scandinavia Vikings here from Newspaper Man is far too much. Thirteen SCVs in production. So, how many command centers? You know, the more impressive part is he has them all in the same hockey. He's managed to find all of his command centers scattered throughout his uh, metropolis. I wish we could, like, remaster to AOE 2. Just zoom out all the way on the map here. Ralph, on the other hand, is actually out of gas. He's at a hundred supply. Newspaper man may have just ground his way through to a winning position. Ralph's gonna try Banshees, um, which is a unit he hasn't built yet. Uh, though I don't know if that's gonna be the overarching solution here. Anti-armor missile. The planetary gonna get some rare Viking kills. Battle cruiser still fighting. Yamato cannon fires a shot but loses the cruiser. Newspaper man hits the deck again. Planetary gets another opportunity to shoot at Vikings, which is always a win. The Banshee also killing Vikings, so just a lot of opportunity to a cyclone. Unfortunately, he microed the cyclone. Yamato cannon on the planetary, which means the battle cruiser jumps away. Meanwhile, the rest of the upgrades that Ralph scrolled over are going to be added on. Three, 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 three. Completed. Across the board, full upgrades for everyone. 
Meanwhile, a newspaper man trying to drag some minerals and gas out of one of the contested bases. Only a couple bases left untouched so far on the map. The battle cruiser, ah, uh, the select on army count keep may have been a bit much here. But Marines are back on the menu. Cloak for Ghost does not work for Bad Chase. And the Marines finally finding a premium target. Vikings on deck. And this fight is jarringly even. <laughs> Ralph actually comes out on top of it. Newspaper man doesn't really have any minerals, but he has gas. Ralph has plenty of minerals, but gas is where he's lacking. And the battle continues. Who would have thought they're building like 20 command centers, 30 turrets, and mass marine would have drained your minerals pretty quickly? Neither of these players has ever considered that. 13 more SCVs. Ralph still holding on to the linchpin of his defense. The planetary. Banshee's finding a surprising amount of value. Considering, where did all the Vikings... There's still 33 Vikings on the map, but they're held in reserve. Actually, they're kind of all glittering near their starports there for reasons. Mules hit the ground. Ralph desperately needs more minerals. He's looking for a high score. Meanwhile, back to basics. Battlecruiser, Vikings, Ghost, Hyperflight Rotors, the fixings. All right, our Banshees will clean up the Marines and now Ralph, he's got high sec auto tracking, Neil Steel armor, combat shields, Ghost Cloak, Corvid Reactor, Raven Energy. Banshee Cloak, Yamato Cannon, plus 3-3, three, 3-3-3, three, 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 three. Advanced Ballistics, Enhanced Shockwaves for the Ghosts, and Hyper Flight Rotors for the Banshees. Seven Ravens on the way for Newspaper Man, something he hasn't given a shot to yet. He's fully mined out of the main. There are 15 minerals left at the natural. There's a couple hundred at the third, but the times of plenty are ending. As the minerals are drawn out of the bases and the Vespine geysers are exhausted. Both players will contest the four o'clock, maybe 420 base. Ralph, the Banshee is going to work. Not particularly uh, strict in their goals, but going to work nonetheless. Also, some ghosts mixed in. The diversity army here. A little bit of everything. Are there nukes? He's got four nukes. Yes, before. Come on, give me it. Ralph! The W stands for nuclear winter. This time, not taking any chances. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Newspaper man! One, two, three! If they were five seconds later, he might have caught the entire fleet! Oh, wow! Narrowly averted disaster! Anti-armor missile across the board, but there's no ground units! Those are Ralph's bunkers! The ghosts are cloaked! The Vikings need to hit the deck, the Banshees have nothing to shoot! The Marines are still doing a lot of damage! Banshees on deck! Bunkers unmanned! The Marines will be cleaned up by the Vikings. Ralph tried to build a command center here. It wasn't enough. Newspaper man threading the needle he didn't know existed and survives the attack and Ralph is beaten down to 60 supply. But newspaper man does not have any minerals and he doesn't have an army that can really crack static defenses. So, is this about the time in many Bronze League heroes where I bring up that to win a game of StarCraft, to win a game of StarCraft, technically the condition is to eliminate all of your opponent's buildings. Right now, neither player has an army that has a real shot of efficiently doing so. And there are not that many minerals left. Now, we get the rare chance to build a history. Newspaper Man and his 
epic hour-long battle against Thaddeus. I think that is probably about his average length of games. He built a beautiful... He was playing Protoss. Which may... I'm not sure which one he plays more, but playing Protoss. He, bu he built across his entire half of the map. He built a death ball. And then... Just didn't quite respect the power of Terran static defenses as he attacked into them. Now, I'm not sure whether that match happened before or after this one. Whether this is possibly a game that inspired his switch to Protoss or the other way around the mule. Well, hold the phones. We've got new investment opportunities, limited time only. Newspaper man realized a chance. Oh, but Widow Mines! Finally! Widow Mines finally have a place, but there's a raven for detection. The Widow Mines get a hit, but still. Newspaper man is now mining 4,000 minerals a minute out of this base. There's not that many minerals in a base. Ralph is running. Well, he's inspired by the Viking place. He's added some Thors. But getting this base could be a deciding factor. As it has funded the creation of six new battle cruisers. And that is a unit that wins games. Without these mineral Oh my god! <laughs> He's at 5,000 minerals a minute! Oh, anti-armor missile, viking duels on either side, and awkward so Oh, the Thor! Oof. The Thor on all the stacked up vikings. He's defending his outpost. Six battle cruisers on the way, though. They can definitely turn the tides and potentially drown Ralph. Using auto turrets to slowly grind through. But surely... The mules, how quickly can you mine out a base with... So, mules don't overlap with regular SCVs mining, but they do overlap with other mules. You can only have one mule mining on a patch at a time really efficiently. So, this is kind of a waste, but always having enough mules... Oh my god, he's mining it so fast. This base is going to be gone in like three minutes. The, the, the small patches are already almost gone. He's dragging every mineral. This could be a dissolve until he just won! No! He didn't know they were there! Oh no! How many thousands of minerals of Vikings did he just lose? No! That was... Uh, oh no! Just one misclick! All it takes is one action! Oh... Uh. Or was he freeing up supply for more battle cruisers? Based on the fact he's now building six ravens and three vikings? I don't think so. And he's actually out of gas now. <laughs> another round of mules will drop. The, the large mineral patches are still intact. Ralph sees another base. There's no gas for newspaper. There's no gas for anyone. We're running out. If only you could. There was, there was one week in like the Legacy of the Void beta, where mules could mine gas. But essentially, Ter everyone was like, now Terrans actually have to come up with new build orders and not build the same units they've built since Wings of Liberty. And that's not fair. Uh, no, Terran players loved it. Everybody else thought it was a horrible idea. And it was a horrible idea. It was not a good idea. Um, but... All right, so the Vikings chase the transferring SCVs, but Vikings... Um... Cool. Uh, the amount of Vikings killed by planetary fortresses may, uh, be setting new records by the... And then they lift up, thus going into range of a turret. The multi-layered defense of both sides really showing its value. Oh my god. One more time, one more time. A full tour. The main. He, he lifted the orbital somewhere. You can hear the scans, though. Some fleet outposts. Whoa, 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 whoa! What? Sa nukes! I All right, that's it. I interrupt this presentation of the BBC for 
Nuclear war! What is it good for? Slaughtering your enemies? Yes! Suddenly, nukes scans across the board. There are seven orbitals for Newspaper Man. And there are four for Ralph. So, not so many you can just scan indefinitely. The SCV count is still surprisingly high for either side. It looks like Newspaper Man will be able to mine out one full extra base. And that is a huge deal in a game like this. Money in the bank. Already. So much has been lost, but there's so much yet to lose. The army value. Wow, Newspaper Man at 7,400 minerals and 7,900 gas. How many ravens? Yeah, I guess 21 ravens would be there. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, the Viking raiding party. Oh, wow, this is Transformers. It's a, maybe a little late to deal with this base as the mules try to gather the last mineral patch. Better late than never, maybe. I'm not actually sure if that's true in this case, but... Two battle cruisers, Joe! You're gonna need more than that. Where are the rest? Where are the rest? He just offers up two battle cruisers! Oh no! And they're still attacking, surprisingly! He's bad. Like, plus three armor on battle cruisers is nothing to scoff at. Especially when the Vikings are on the ground, but eventually taken down. Mass Raven, but anti-armor. He may have played in a different time when you could just mass up Ravens and do infinite damage. Now you can have a uncomfortably thick coating of Dorito dusting like a Halo LAN party in 2001. But at this point, you need something to follow it up. Maybe a handful of battle cruisers. The Vikings are on the deck, but the battle cruisers most definitely are not. Auto turrets. It's unclear exactly what's happening. Interference matrix in the midst. He's slowly interference matrixing the whole army. He's locking it down. He's knocking it out, and he forces it to retreat. The Vikings disabled on the ground, which some might argue is their disabled state already. They're uh, gonna try to fight the battle cruisers, but newspaper man with the Oh my god, anti-armor missile! He gets too close! Oh, some friendly dusting! I really... From the start, people talked about how the animation probably needs to look a little different, so that way you can tell the units apart. But, who cares about those silly Terrans? Uh, yeah, Newspaper Man will explode a Dorito grenade in his own face, and that will cause him to retreat temporarily. As he likes the efforts here and he will build seven more ravens. That is the follow-up. Ralph beaten down under 100 supply. He has the money with which to build more. He never got stim pack. Say no to stim, all right? You gotta appreciate. They both have exactly the same amount of upgrades. The slight differences are no stim pack and uh, no hot rapid reignition thrusters for Ralph. Whereas, Newspaper Man doesn't have Corvid Reactor, which is a big deal for Raven Energy, and he doesn't have Hyperflight Rotors, which is irrelevant. Oh, here we go again. Anti-armor missile, there's not remotely enough. Newspaper Man could win this fight with ease. Trying to long distance mine from refineries here. The battle cruisers, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it microwing for lack of a better word. Yeah, newspaper man still building up marines. Wait, what? Okay. The marines go marching one by one. Hurrah, hurrah. Planetary ruining fun. Hurrah, hurrah. Marines go marching one by one. The planetary ruining fun. Marines go marching on. Well, let's see if we can get a high score. All right, 25, and count. this is irrelevant. Vikings on deck. I don't think the planetary, there's one SCV who's not repairing as a matter of principle. Making it fair. Interference matrices, but the turrets bring down a cruiser. 
And without the battlecruisers, there's no reliable anti-grunt. Oh my god, the turrets are killing so much. The turrets just unloading. The turrets on both sides, the heroes of the day. More ravens! More ravens! The battlecruiser vulnerable! Turrets! Succeeding you, brothers. The angsty temporary turrets will finally take them down. The battle the planetary at 50 kills! The marine rally point still incredibly questionable, especially to those marines. More turrets, though. The turrets killing so many. The ravens are all dead. The turrets. The TPM. A battlecruiser barely takes out the last one. Newspaper man is crumbling. He's he's too deep behind enemy lines, and then he goes straight, and then everything's cleaned up. Newspaper man. He got an entire new base. He got a hundred more supply, but the pressure was too much. He couldn't handle it. The rally points are all over the place. The turrets just obliterated the army and the actual army that Ralph has a vet. What the hell is going on? He's micro, you're microing a little too hard, bro. What's happening there is he's right clicking a lot, but he can't quite get to it. So I don't, I don't know. If you're at exactly the right range, the battle cruiser is very upset. The follow-up. All of Newspaper Man's money will go into seven battle cruisers. And now, oh no, the zoning planetaries, planetaries, the real heroes on both sides, anchoring the defense. Vikings on deck. Turret's no longer able to hit them, but the planetary, planetary is getting more Viking kills than actual anti-air units here throughout this match. There's still the staggered tank line to contend with. Now, will Ralph learn the lesson that Newspaper Man did? Which is, be careful going too far behind- No, not again! Ah, yes, as they say, great minds think alike, but less great minds think even more alike -er. Oh no, what did you think you would find here? Ah, oh, the staggered tanks! They've been waiting over 30 minutes! The turrets! The battle cruisers competing! Ralph is down under 70 supply! They can't help it! They must attack! And with it, the dip it's really, this is what it's all about. This is why they build the defenses. Because neither of these players realizes that you don't have to attack. It is just a fact. It is not a not a fact. It's a commandment. It is an evolutionary requirement that when you win a fight, you strike. While the iron is hot and can be forged into bronze. Newspaper man knows that as well. He will take everything that's unseaged and send it across the map as is required. Vikings hit the deck. Marines clean it up. Battle cruisers cruising. Now who will have the defenses to withstand? Double Yamato. The, the widow mine who's been here since. Oh, he right clicks on a refinery. He's looking the wrong way. Widow mine takes a hit. The other widow mine, which has, a, it has one kill. A jump. I think he jumped at the last second, but the last second is too late. And now, Ralph, it's your turn. <laughs> Ralph has won a battle. He prepares for attack. Meanwhile, newspaper man, probably a good thing for him. He didn't realize he still had several. Oh my God. How many? He has 10 battle cruisers. I think he just hit the select all army hockey based on the fact all the siege tanks are also selected. But each side has nuclear missiles in reserve, but no way to launch them. As there are zero ghosts on the map. The, wow. Okay. The SCV count approaching game starting levels. Planetary's killing more Vikings. No! Oh no, the ta the staggered tank line. At this point, there's no minerals left to be gained. There's only two bases with minerals left. 
There's only like four or five thousand minerals left on the. Actually, this base has like ten thousand. I. They're both. They both have an army in the bank. I don't know what. What? Oh, he may have a clicked his own planetary. No! The stress! It's getting to both of them. 500 APM for Ralph. What did he just start building? A few Marines and then zero. It was an exhausting moment. He, uh, newspaper man realizes he was shooting at the wrong planetary. His planetary is overall in autumn colors here. The widow mines inching forward. Um, good idea here, but then realizes there's not. Oh, well. <laughs> The fleet. Ten battle cruisers seems like too big to fail. It seems like that is an army that cannot be beaten. That is too many. But you must have skipped to this part of the game and done it without liking and subscribing if you think that's too big to fail. We've seen so far, Newspaper Man has lost 10 and Ralph has lost 15 battle cruisers. 72 Vikings to 80. 336 to 231 Marines. Over 500 Marines have died. Approximately 70 to this planetary. Oh my god. <laughs> and counting, because apparently the rally point was never fixed. I... No, wait. They're, they're trading kills. <laughs> oh no. The po I think the worst possible rally po Oh, no. Um. Oh, he's rallying to his opponents to- A jump! And he will outflank these refineries, which still have 3,000 gas. Ralph is out of money. Though, he is slowly gathering- Oh, my. The sac- uh, the Eventually, they'll run out of ammo, right? Oh, God. Newspaper man. I, I assume. Well, actually, we can go to the newspaper man cam. Yes, he has barracks on a different hotkey from Starport and Factory. Using the 567 setup and using none of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> meanwhile, Ralph going to take a solid quarter of his remaining SCVs and long distance mine from the only base with minerals. Building another command center as newspaper man. I don't know how many he has left. That like even the control group doesn't have a number because it's double digits. So that's not very helpful. Uh five, four. He's only got ten, actually. So now after these arduous battles. The supply is once again getting dangerously close to even. Ralph has retaken the army supply lead, but he's invested much of it in widow mines. Newspaper man is no longer mining minerals. I take it back. There are 500 minerals left. This is it. There's one base that remains. 53 minutes have passed and we are no closer to crowning a champion. A legend. They'll both have secured their place, I think. I, I hesitated because I'm not sure what we call the winners of these games. The first survivor. <laughs> Leave a comment with what they should be called. Because they're both truly here. The... the <laughs> the blood sacrifices continue. 92 over 100 kills. He has to be getting a notification, right? Like, let's go to the newspaper man action cam. Our army be scrapping. As he's checking to see if there are any upgrades he hasn't gotten. He finds... He finds Stimpak, I think. He No, he's literally just clicking out all the tech labs. Drilling claws, smart servos, Corvin reactor, cloak hey, for something. Attacking our base. 
You know, it might not be a notification because his marines aren't attacking. I'm not sure, but he's getting attacked. Will there be a jump? Will he jump? Newspaper man. Is this the moment? He's standing by. He's waiting for his key upgrades. Ralph uses some of his last minerals to add more battle cruisers. Newspaper man. I mean, there's nothing left to defend. He still has the multi multi-planetary deep defense. And I'm going to bring up again. Oh, jump! Oh, wait. A measured response. Possibly. T Is it a bait? Two battle cruisers are kind of enough here. Newspaper man with a surprising amount of restraint, though we may just lose two battle cruisers. Though Marines are not something easily replaced either now. Um. He took all that. Oh, that's a little overkill. Um. Uh. <laughs> you bought a cannon onto the Marines. Ah! Things are escalating. Battle cruisers from Ralph! A strong response! And then, newspaper man. Another jump! Ah! <laughs> it's happening! The battle cruisers chase down, the battle begins! Both sides have most of their Yamato cannons. Ralph will be the first one to use them. Unleashes a broadside, and the fleet will go their separate ways. As things escalated, that Yamato cannon was on the Archduke. And war was the only response. But the Vikings come in, and suddenly the battle cruisers of Newspaper Man are outflanked as the combined fleets and even Widow Mines. Yamato's late on the draw! Newspaper Man! Oh, and we thought 10 battle cruisers were too much, but they were far too little. As Ralph with his own cruisers. The the most predictable yet dramatic escalation of events leaves us with exactly the same army supply. With nearly equal worker counts. With next to no resources on the map. Scratching at the one hour mark. We are still no closer. Those battle cruisers need repair. Are there though? But wait! He's overstayed his welcome. One battle cruiser down. The mines are closing in. They have drilling claws. They will fire. Down go two more crew on counter mines. Left after the battle, both sides resorting to the dastardly tactics of widow mines as their beautiful fleets have been knocked out of the sky. Mines not known for their honor, but known for their effectiveness, a cheap and dirty way to possibly counter what's left of your opponent. Sometimes forgotten for so long. The minefields, the battle cruisers, both both sides starting to realize there's nothing left. Taking a look at each other. The last few hundred gas. The last few thousand minerals. The last battle cruisers to be built. Neither side can rebuild these armies. They can't even rebuild a fraction. Though technically the fraction could be nine tenths, but don't be that guy. You know what I meant. A, a small fraction, if you want to get specific. But I wouldn't. 59 minutes. There is no time limit. Though. There is... Uh, a time where ceasefire will result in a draw. If no one is mining and no buildings are destroyed... After about three minutes, a draw timer starts. And after three more minutes, neither one comes away a winner, but neither one comes away a loser. But the minerals are still mining. The buildings are still within reach. 
So. And there are still nuclear missiles! Which... Is it worth it? Does it matter? Another one! He will use all the gas left in this base to make sure his opponent doesn't have it. The SCBs move, but too late! He still has two more nukes. Is it worth it? Yes. It's about sending a nuclear message. We've passed the one hour mark. But a counter nuke! Oh wait, he doesn't see it. He doesn't see the nuke. A counter nuke from Ralph. It's going to land. It's going to land. It's gonna hit something. He walks back into it. The Viking! Newspaper man unleashes nuclear hellfire. Ralph is caught in it. I'm not sure whose battle cruisers are who, who's those. The widow mines are knocked out. Yamato cannons. Vikings everywhere. Something resembling micro. He's hitting the only battle cruiser that is an anti armor missile. The rest come out of the Dorito dust. Auto turret. Ghost underneath. The battle cruiser count. One to three. Parting shot. Yamato jumps out of it. He dodged the Yamato cannon. And just like that, it's still unclear. Without the nuke, Newspaper Man loses the fight. With it, He has 52 minerals, and he will not be getting any more. Ralph has a few thousand. The production tab hasn't been useful for most of the game, and now is the least relevant it's ever been. There is one nuke. Left run. No, the Marines! Oh, no! Oh! Oh! Oh, oh no! Oh. Another few hundred minerals down. The minefield. Forgotten. But many moments after the battle ends, they are still waiting. Scans are one thing they both have. Scans and scans and scans and scans. I mean, what are you gonna do? Drop mules? At this point, dropping- Oh, the mineral patches. That's it. There's not- Usually in these games, there's like one mineral patch in the main or natural or something. No. We're out. It's empty. This base. Every- Oh, wait, there's still a thousand... Okay, I take it back. There's almost a thousand gas left at the base that was nuked. But there are two mineral patches on the entire map. They've both mined the better part of a hundred thousand and nearly 40,000 gas. They... 69,000 minerals lost. Whatever ha What was the kill count on that planetary? 102 and 16... At one hour and three minutes. <clears throat> draw! Newspaper man! Offers a draw! Diplomacy! After the most total war possible, Newspaper man tries his final tactic. There's no way to force, like, there's no draw option. It just happens. By offering draw, and by offering, I mean just saying that, he has shown his hand. Ralph is still mining. Yeah, the, the, like, it's an automatic thing. This is a ladder game. It will automatically be detected. Soon, the possibilities, the board will be set. As Ralph stops mining, the timer begins. If a building is not destroyed, not units, if a building is not destroyed, then the draw timer starts. After a couple minutes, yes. But there are still plenty of buildings easily destroyed. 
but there will be effectively no more mining. The minerals are gone. It's empty. There are no more minerals on hardwire. How long does it take to mine out hardwire with a pretty focused effort from both sides? About an hour. There's your answer. There are about a thousand gas left in these refineries, but only Newspaper Man has the minerals with which to build refineries. Ralph has three minerals and 300 gas and whatever units he has right now. He cannot build those refineries. I don't... The orbital, I don't even think it's trying to land. He's just consolidating his forces. They both pulled back. Now, it's no longer a hypothetical. This is trending towards a draw. Neither side is mining, and it appears neither side is willing to risk. Newspaper man invested in all these def defenses. But... The rocks, by the way, on either side still intact. The Widowmonds, the scouting orbital, because what? Well, maybe orbital isn't the building to scout with, but maybe he'll realize he has perfectly good barracks at home. And he still has a nuke, but he can't build a ghost. Oh, no. A lot of things. Like, 99.9% .9 of StarCraft strategies. Assume you have some form of mineral income. That nuke will not be launched. And you can't return it to the manufacturer. A widow mine. <clears throat> Auto turrets. Scans on both sides. Oh, almost loses something to the widow mine anyways. The SCV's tucked into the safest place. Oh my god. It's been 45 minutes since we saw this, but Ralph jumps the battle cruisers to the other side. What an insane risk. The orbital's being chased into turret range. Are they does he see them? He does not see them though. Neither side losing any buildings. It should say stalemate detected. No more. Honestly, as an observer, I don't know if I'll see it. I'm pretty sure we see it. It's been so long. It takes a couple minutes. Oh, the mines. Are there any ravens? I mean, Ralph has scans. But if he walks into the mines, Ralph has slightly more army supply, but he can't break the planetaries. It is... If he takes out all the anti-air, the battle cruisers can eventually Yamato their way through all the turrets and win the game. There's a lot of win conditions for either side. But, oh, there it is! Two minutes until a stalemate. Ralph sees the confirmation and says, no, not today. As he goes for the engineering base. Yet again. If those ravens are able to get an interference matrix, though, they can't jump away. Anti-armor missiles. He jumps! The timer is reset. And there's a lot of buildings left on the map. Ooh, lucky for him, Ralph did not choose interference matrix. I think we just heard like three scans. <laughs> I mean, at this point, you literally have no other use. Maybe mules to trigger widow mines. Not something you uh, think about. We're back to cyclones and Vikings. Will Ralph attack up a ramp? into the staggered planetary 
He's got a single tank. For now. Plus three tanks do horrible damage. Where are the scans? We don't mind. Spread out. The battle cruisers. Slowly working forward. The standing army is better for Ralph. But. Where's the counter scan? Oh my god, those plus three. Yamato on the turret! Ralph is chipping away. Nothing can be replaced. There are zero minerals to 100. There is no income. The board is set. But interference matrices, multiple interference matrices, he can't do anything. He can move the battle cruisers away, though. Anti armor missile. He's got to move the cruisers. Interference matrices are running out. He can jump. He jumps one. Looking for more. Jumps the rest. He can't repair the cruisers. That's permanent damage. He has no minerals to repair. At this point, even taking damage. A floating orbital. Newspaper man found the minerals for one more raven. It's been serving him well. Who knows who's scanning? Everyone's scanning. Vendaya scan. Ventria scan. A quadra scan. I. An orbital is on the move, which is a questionable choice. They have, I'm pretty sure Newspaper Man has every upgrade. He doesn't have, con no wait, he does have concussive shell. Yeah, he, he went out of his way to click on everything. Auto turrets, one of the last SCVs. Ralph does not have a raven. Ravens, in all their energy-based efficiency, could decide the match. If he loses the ravens, I think this is 100% a draw. As right now, the battle cruisers, one bad engagement away. The mine's still lurking, as mines do. He's gonna try it again. Actually, miss the mark. The refineries are burning, and that will reset the timer. Auto turn. Oh, be careful! The uh Nobody can repair anything. Even ravens cost minerals to repair. There is no opportunity to repair. Every point of damage is now permanent, except for, I guess, the one medevac healing the marines. The one med. One tank. That is a battle cruiser. It does have Yamato. Interference matrix. Auto turrets. There are still the tanks who have not moved. They've been static to defense since they were sieged. And will continue to be. The tank. Oh my god, he has a nuke. Oh sweet nuclear Jesus. He fires the nuke! No, come on! Oh, people are gonna think this is scripted. Does he see it? The last nuke! No, don't nuke yourself! Oh my god! Um... The only thing the nuke kills... ...is the ghost. What an ending. Doing a perfect reenactment of StarCraft Ghost. The planetary cannot be repaired. It will burn, though. There is not any minerals with which to repair it. Planetary looking extra sad. Cleaning bot, not a repair bot. Why is there a cleaning bot out here? Survived all this time. It will burn. Another casualty. 
The minefields. The minefields. Does he see them? I mean, you can see the indentation, but... On the march. I mean, the supplies. Uh, we are trending towards a draw. It's an hour and 15. There's nothing left. We haven't been mining for. It's uh, everything's out, only scans. Remain. And I have no... Yep, there's the army. The constant pitter-patter. And drone of scans. I, I still want my sound pack. Alright. Where is my scan sound pack? I will... I'm... The mines are on the move. The mines move just as Ralph moves back. The, if he catches it with the mines, that could be the win. It's all empty out here. Zero minerals. Two minutes. The draw timer! for an incredibly rare second. An incredibly rare second time. 90 minute, 90 seconds. Okay, now we're done. <laughs> One Yamato on a turret. This time, Newspaper Man wants to reset the board. He has said, not, not yet. He's realized that Ralph has not been the most cost-effective of players. Ralph seems content. There's little else to actually kill buildings. Well, he does have six tanks. Though I don't know if they can unsiege after being sieged. Mines. Killing mines. The greatest counter to mines. Oh, they're moving forward. Did he notice? The mines will burrow. The mines will burrow. No! But he will kill the mines. And the battle cruiser's in the main. Oh, no. Select all. It's all. There are still marines in the bunker. No, the Selecto Army! The Widow Mines have ruined everything! I hate Widow Mines! Permanent damage to the bat. There's still Marines in the bunker from the ill fated first attack over an hour ago! Oh no! Ralph! No! No! Not like this! I mean, he, he, he's trying to corral him. Not that... At this point, there is a win condition. Like... Well, if the battle cruiser... Neither player can repair, remember. Obviously, or rebuild anything. So... There's... The battle cruiser is still going to work in the main, though. That's not particularly relevant. Ralph has now lost... So much. He still has three bruised cruisers. No, Ralph! The mines are chasing. A cyclone is a pretty good counter to a battle cruiser until it just dies. A little more damage. That cruiser is a whole deal. No, God, the move command. Oh, no. After everything. Oh, oh, Ralph. After all of this, an attempt to base trade ends. 
in disaster. He jumps home, but why? We can't repair you. The SCVs look up and look back down. Like, Billy, you got minerals in your hand. Yeah, five minerals. It's something. It is. It's the only minerals left on the map. Now here's here's the rub. Newspaper man still has to get through the turret without losing all his anti-turret capability. Every point of damage is permanent. He's still There are still three battle cruisers with Yamato. Did he salvage the bunker? Or what? I think the battle cruisers destroyed it. There's nothing. Well, there's still gas in these geysers, but nobody has the minerals with which to get a refinery. And it's not like gas is the problem. They combined half a battle cruiser of HP between them. The surviving fleet. Ralph still has a nuke, but no way to launch it. The Widow Mines could backfire as well. That is not an impossibility. The, the planetary is burning. A single turret. No, be careful. Don't do it. Ralph, please. Thank you. Safety first. And he's gone. Like a thief in the night. He's, he's, oh, maybe too late. He's realized how important it is to keep these battle cruisers intact. Newspaper man, if you remember his legendary. Okay, first, remember, this is Christmas Day. This game was played. And two, if you remember his legendary battle against Thaddeus. How did Newspaper Man ultimately fall? A handful of undetected widow mines chipping away at his last tempest. That was how Newspaper Man crumbled in such a dramatic end. This time, it's his turn. But he's still... A win is still in doubt. Both players can still avoid a draw. But can they win the game? Wow. Wait. Everything... There are no ground units left. It's on Newspaper Man, who has one battle cruiser, eight ravens. He's got ten widow mines. Uh, unlimited scans. He's gonna try to Yamato again. Stay out of range. He does. Oh, he takes any damage! It doesn't quite kill the turret. It does 240, a turret has 250. Any damage at all. How many more missiles can that battlecruiser withstand? The Carrick just... Unknown what's underneath. At this point, Ralph is... He's, he's letting Newspaper Man hopefully screw it up. There's nothing left for him to do. He's just got to hope and pray. I'm not sure if taking down the rocks is really the most meaningful option right now, but the rocks which have survived 83 minutes will now finally be taken down. What is this? A mule! A scouting mule! He could use the friendly fire of the tanks! He's realizing that mules are a possibility. He's beginning... He's beginning to believe. Wait a second! Orbitals aren't just for scans. The tanks could actually potentially damage each other. This could force the issue. A battle cruiser? 
every Yamato cooldown precious. The final cruisers, thankfully not going over the mines. An auto turret. Oh, but the battle cruiser gets drawn in. Heavy breathing. Every point of damage on either side. Ravens, of course. He's got the the mines as well. Slowly working the turrets through the turrets. He's forcing the issue. Oh no. This is it. Are the Widow Mines in range? Does it matter? He's got a shot. He targets a Raven. It's too much. The last battle cruiser. Oh, but he get Oh, he's so close. 24 HP. Every battle cruiser down. Is that it? The battle cruiser not targeted. He's just going. He, why is he just going? He could lose everything. Oh no, but the laws of terror, the battle cruiser falls. Oh, inspired by the bloodshed and it is bloodlust. Newspaper man can't help himself. And now he's down to two ravens, but there are no units left. Those two ravens. And remember there are also tanks, but oh no, newspaper man. The laws, the commandments of Terran even at this late second hour cannot be broken oh my god how many now we have to count the turrets and also the turrets there are still 11 turrets left if each of them takes a shot because newspaper man can't quite micro perfectly how long will this take and will the draw okay so we're in a very real possibility. Well, if the tanks are able to unsiege, <gasps> he's broken one of the sacred commandments. And that means this match will not have a victor, but it may have a winner. He's unsieged the tanks. Some said it couldn't be done. These tanks have not been unsieged since the times of plenty. But now called upon their ancient wisdom and more importantly, significant range. The uh, ancient tanks will move forward. But the SCVs stand against them. Ralph, pull the boys one last time! Into battle, the tanks themselves! It's not enough but mules! could be dropped. No, it's all over. That's it. Ralph with every unit destroyed. He taps it out. Zero supply. Newspaper man has his redemption. But at what cost? 12 mines, 138 SCVs, a medevac, 83 Vikings, 9 siege tanks, 374 marines, 20 battle cruisers, 47 ravens and dozens of buildings, 75,000 minerals, that one extra base that he dropped several hundred mules on, give or take. 27,000 gas. And then, of course, for Ralph. One Thor, 24 mines lost, 85 SCVs, 7 medevacs, 15 banshees, a hellion, 108 vikings, 21 cyclones, 12 liberators, 7 siege tanks, 316 marines, 26 battle cruisers, 9 ghosts, 4 ravens, 69,000 minerals, 27,000 gas. All lost, everything lost, but at the end of the day, newspaper man, in nearly 90 minutes, the winner. That's all there was left. And that concludes episode 200. I hope you've enjoyed. I think 
while there may be many questions and even more comments, no one can doubt this was truly Bronze League Heroes. See you next time.